the Outspoken Engineer podcast. It begins. Episode one, season one. The journey begins right here. Right, why have we started this? I'm an engineer, I've been an engineer for some time, um, been outspoken, and I think we all can be a little bit outspoken in a lot of things. And I think there's definitely a fear of people being outspoken to go against the way things should be. Uh, there's a lot of conversations out there in my industry, in other industries, and people are afraid to talk about them. So one of the things that we're going to do is get people in this room, in this studio, and we're going to ask them the questions that perhaps you want to ask them or you're too afraid to ask them. Create a bit of conflict. <laughs> exactly that. We're going to cause a bit of conflict. However, in the process, we're all going to learn. So in terms of the personality disc system, this is going to clash. We're going to have a lot of reds in the room, a lot of blues in the room, and we're going to get answers. Because the reality is, is, as people, we're only really going to grow by learning from people yeah. that disagree with us. And uh, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to bring you some fiction as well. We're going to bring you some makeup stories for some makeup people who have got some, you know, really some, some tales. Um, you know, nothing to do with air con, but believe it or not, people with stories, we get to learn, you know, we learn a lot from people with stories. I've got a few mentors myself, which I'm happy to listen to for hours on end. Some of the stories are true. Some of the stories are a bit twisted, but guess what? They all have a positive ending, you know, one way or another. So um, from air conditioning to IT, to marketing, to technology, to be in the southeast of England where we are, to sit down with the people that perhaps you see the companies they work for and ask them the questions that I'm going to ask them and Ben is going to ask them. Um, you're going to be asking them questions in the comments below. Uh, hopefully, you will learn and hopefully we can, uh, we can make the southeast of England and the UK a better place. Right, Jacob, tell us about yourself. Right. Subco FM is a air conditioning mechanical company in the southeast of England covering nationwide um, businesses, houses, you name it. But putting that to one side, I want to go through how it all started. So how do you breed as an engineer? You know, do you, you don't wait. I, I wasn't born an engineer. Um, no, <laughs> I, I wasn't. I wasn't born with an adjustable spanner, I can assure you. Yeah. Um, I think pinning it down where it all started was being a kid, my dad hated DIY. I don't know. Oh, you really? Did you do, do you do, do you DIY when you were little? Oh yeah, I had to be. My dad wasn't around, so yeah, there you I go. had to be. Okay, well my dad was around and I had to be. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when you don't want to do DIY and you're a bit fearful to do DIY, what ends up happening is you, you love to hate it and you mm. hate to love it. So what I think, I'll never forget being little, I had a desk, it was in my living room with a little kiddie's desk and one day I decided to make a windmill. By the end of it, it weren't a windmill. It was it was a broken <laughs> it was a broken desk. But I think I think being taught being able to DIY, what it has, has allowed me to do is to allow me to think for myself. Yeah. Um and my hands and my brain started to to basically work. Um and going up through the ranks to school, I was never ha I was never the intellect. I was a mid range student, which loved school, a lot of effort, just wasn't the, the brightest spark. Um from school um, I did college. I did aerospace engineering. was pretty good. Teaching was a bit amateur, but learned a lot. Uh, wanted to be B1 licensed engineer for Virgin Atlantic Airlines. Oh, passed, nice. passed the exams, but I didn't pass the uh, the cadet interview because I wasn't yeah. driven. I wasn't a driven aerospace engineer. Um, applied for a job as an aircon engineer. It was simple as that. It was an ad in the Crawley Observe. Never forget it. It was for a fully qualified role, and I didn't even know what an air conditioning unit looked like. Was they were they based in Crawley? They were based in East Grinstead. Okay. Spent ten years there, and uh, from the ambition of doing it to sort of you know, I fell in love immediately. I love mm. the industry. I love all elements of it. You know, I'm not as much on the tools anymore, but I'm telling you, if I retire tomorrow, I'm getting my hands dirty. Mm. It's it, we, we, air conditioning is a fantastic industry, and it will continue to to be that for some time. Right uh, now, you've told us about your background. Why why aircon? Um, right, why aircon? Well, a little bit of an accident. So basically not getting into Virgin, it was a case of I needed a job and I needed yeah. a trade, okay? Um, and I'm sure you were the same. People always tell you, oh, become an electrician or become a plumber. Yeah, I was standard sort of, trades. Exactly that, right? And there was we were in the stint of go to London, become a plumber and get 30 grand a year, which back then was, you know, 
probably equivalent to 70k yeah which was a bit bananas but i didn't want to deal with soilage and poo and stuff yeah. you know not in terms of arrogance but that was just the way it was and it was really the ad in the paper the crawley observer for a senior maintenance service and maintenance engineer i saw it i applied for it and uh, and the rest was history i knew nothing about aircon the only aircon i did know was an air on airplanes which is liquid oxygen systems completely irrelevant to what we oh, do God. today however so you went straight into a senior role uh i didn't get into a senior no role. so i was taken on as an apprentice okay but something that um happens often and we have it with our apprentices uh the, the latest two taking them on that's left school done college mm. one of them been in college and one has then got a full-time job is it's very hard for youngsters to have direction mm. and that was something that i had it was you if you do this you do that okay there was never a plan b no one would ever sit down with you and say well what if you don't get this yeah. what if you don't become the air uh, the aircraft engineer that you want to be have you thought of a plan b there was never that so I'm a little bit lucky that I fell into it and I love I, and I fell in love with it and I still fall in love with it this day. Right. So how did you go from being employed? Uh, basically, you said that you was an apprentice mm -hmm. um, and going through another company to fa founding Subcall was a transition hard. And so, um, it? no, it, it, I, I think from where we are now, seven years down the line, yeah. um, looking back, it was extremely hard. But at the time. No, it, it, was, it wasn't. It was quite an easy transition for me. So one thing that I've done over the past sort of 12 years is I've, I've read a lot of books. Yeah. And it's something that, you know, for 10 quid, people don't realise what, the, what they can actually get for £10, the yeah. amount of knowledge they can get from a book. I read a lot of books, and it was kind of like subconsciously I was planning for my next step. So it kind of fell in. It fell into I was doing, I was doing work on my own in my own van. And uh, But actually, let's fast forward a bit. Um you know, to be an ambitious young man and to be held back, either because of a lack of interest of your employer or because they're just happy for you to be a bit dumb, mm. uh, something that I'm completely against now and I still am, and a lot of businesses out there, we're coming for you. Um, no, um, it still happened. So so basically, it was a case of, I'll give you another little story. i never forget, I was working in uh, West London with a senior engineer, George, very good engineer, uh, very good friend. And... Um, we finished at about one o'clock. I've still got the picture somewhere. And we were both, from one o'clock to three o'clock, we were laying on the floor in this office, empty office, mm -hmm. with nothing to do. We were done. We were just kicking back time for three o'clock. But something triggered that day to say, I'm 21 years, 22 years old. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, is this what I should be doing? Um, I know engineers are like, you know, yeah. I, I at one point I was one of them. Um, but that was another kick to say, Jacob, you're going to do things better. And mindset changed. It was a case of we were doing things as engineers that customers weren't happy with. Uh, units we were installing were ugly. Um, mm. People weren't getting this. There was a void between engineers and office. Uh, I understand why you keep them separate, but there still should be a good supervisory role in between. It's something that we as a business are going to continue to grow on because it's very difficult. Um, but there was just loads of key factors, loads of red flags, and then mm. eventually I took the plunge. It was the apprentice uh, which give give me the kick to say, I was in a room full of you know there was twenty of us on the day, long hard day, big interview process, and then you realise well these people they don't know nothing like they're, yeah. they're actors, no, um, yeah. and that was a, it was just a kick. And then I've known where I want the business to go, um, and we're continuing to grow. You know we have the same small business problems that most have. Um, that was it really you know it was never me i always wanted to we always work for the end consumer i never wanted to work for anyone else no um a lot of subcontractors that i come across that they start on their own one of the, the problems that they have is they're too short-sighted and and the reason is is they just want to make their quick buck and go home um mm. we're trying to create a platform of engineers which are the best and they're accountable um and we're dealing with the consumer because we're not dealing with another company which deals with another no. company which deals with another company. So um, that's how I kind of got into it, really. So, so 2015, we incorporated, and I've been in the industry. I started in 2006. Oh, okay. So I'm I'm probably good for uh, 16 years. Okay. Say, 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 like 2006 to this point now. Yeah. 
how has the actual the industry changed in your perspective? Air, air conditioning. Air conditioning industry. industry. Okay, so wind back to two thousand and six, things were very basic. Yeah. Things weren't very efficient. Like units were ugly. Units weren't yeah. very ugly. If we're looking at houses, units yeah. are really ugly. Commercial things were very basic, uh, very inefficient. Basic isn't necessarily bad, by the way. No. Sometimes basic means you can fix it the same day. Yeah. You know, bulging, and also sometimes it means it. It can last for years. So yeah. uh, things were very basic. Things were very efficient. Uh, we were on an old refrigerant, R22, which okay. was quite hazardous to the environment. High GWP, high regulation. So when I started in 2006, you know, if you're letting gas out, you're scared. Like, yeah. it was the stage was from sort of the 90s to early 2000s. If you wanted to degas the system, you'd cut the pipe and you'd go and have a coffee. Oh, really? Yeah. Then we got in, I got into it, it and it was fog up. It would fog up, you yeah. disappear, no one would die because you'd all be in the cafe having your bacon yeah. sarnies, right? Um, 2006 safe handling refrigerants, quite regulated. There was the fear of God in us, you know. Mm. If you lit gas out, you're getting electrocuted by God, you know, or yeah. ca cats will die, God will kill kittens. You wouldn't do it, yeah. Um, changing of the guards, I'd say 2006, there was a lot of people from the 90s that were retiring, and there's a churn. We're going through this churn now, a lot of people getting older, and a lot of people. Well, less people are entering the industry. Um, and I'd say if you wanted to look at sectors, residential-wise, I'd say back then one in a 1,000 people had aircon, whereas now one in 750 have aircon. So in terms of the residential sector, it, it's growing. Um, going back to that to where it is now, things are more efficient now. Yeah. Things are more complicated now. Things are more digital now. Things are more electronic. Um, looking at the manufacturers, the demand is higher, so the corporations are bigger. Um, there's a lot more layers to the industry than, you know, uh, products. You need to know about integration. You need to know about purification, you know, BMS, et cetera, et cetera. And also there's a vast range of products. So um, I'm not going to go for the positive and the negatives with you yeah. from 2006 to, to now. No. But it is what's expected. Yeah. Whereas, which I'm sure you're going to grab me on later on in a minute. Um, mm. But the next few years, I think a lot of it's going to pause. Okay. So, yeah. I mean... You said about the uh, manufacturers they, 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 from t 2006 to now they're a lot a lot busier and there's a higher demand. Um, why do you, is that in the last few years? Do you think that's become more and more important in the last few years, or is it? Uh, it depends on the point. So okay. the, all the aspect of the way you want to look at it, okay. right? So I knew when we started Aircon, mm. as in as a business, it would have been great to have loads of commercial businesses. Okay. Hmm. Uh, one of my favorite words you can hear a lot of is resilience. It is the it is what it's me and it's us as a business being resilient and be able to cope with things. But we, I since day one was resilient to households. And what I mean by that, Ben, is if we put aircon in your bedroom and there's dust on the floor, yeah. you are going to hammer us for it. Okay, yeah. you're not going to be happy with it. Yeah, no. A lot of businesses and companies aren't resilient enough to take on that because they've got their commercial contracts. Yeah. Okay. So to go through your point. Um, Installing residential aircon has crept up massively on some of the bigger yeah. manufacturers because they've gone from even the manufacturers have had to learn. They've had to go, blimey, we need to understand how Wi Fi works, mm. integration. Whereas we've still got older engineers or older technology uh, mm. technical support, which have been doing it for 20 years. They'd want to know about how to connect the aircon to your phone. Yeah. You know, so um, there's that element of it um, in terms of uh, the overview. In terms of the manufacturers themselves, um, they've had to grow. You know, yeah. the industry in, the, in residential has grown massively. Um, in terms of the industry in general, it's just grown, it's grown massively. I mean, how I've seen it, because obviously I've, I've, I haven't really been known to this industry for a while, but uh, the last two years, in my eyes, have been the most popular years. For, for households, yes. For households, yeah, um, residential. There's obviously a few uh, commercial, there's a few yeah. agendas, you know, the electrical uh, climate change agenda, yeah. the, you know, the climate uh the green being green, lower, you know, better sustainability, yeah. blah, de, blah, 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 blah. Um, obviously, don't forget, Ben, that's us as a business. We're yeah. growing. You know, yeah. it's not always the same everywhere else. But um, we're going to touch on the manufacturers uh, a bit later on yeah. today. But they've uh, they've had to grow. We've not seen any die out. No. But we've seen, I know a lot, I've, I've, I've spoken to enough people to, to see the change in the 90s and the 2000s, who are leading and who aren't. But they're all still there, yeah, which is good. Uh, I mean, changes wise, so say as an industry now, uh, air conditioning industry, mm -hmm. bit that being, uh, if you could make any changes, what changes would you make? 
Changes in the industry. Yeah. Okay, right, fine. Okay, this is important here. Let me tell you this. I'm not for regulation in the free markets. I think less regulation is important to let the market do what it wants. Let's talk aircom. So when I started in 2006, the fear of God was in us with mm. safe handling and refrigerants. So Ben, you you could buy, if you were trained, you do your safe handling course, yeah. you would pop to your local supplier. I'm yeah. not going to mention any just in case they want to shoot us. Um, <laughs> and uh, you could buy some R22 refrigerant. You were better trained than you are now. Yeah. Okay, in my opinion, it's a it's a it's a matter of opinion here. Um, if you were to incorrectly use that refrigerant, dump it into the atmosphere, you would be harming the global warming. Uh, yeah. You know, the potential would be higher, and you would affect the atmosphere. Okay. Okay. Agreed. Yeah. Um, safe handling refrigerants give us the fear of God. So there were rumours that pe- people were being fined. Mm. If you had a bottle of uh, OFN in your van with a regulator on, and you popped a local supplier there might have been somebody from safe handling that was doing an inspection on your van you would be fined three thousand pounds there were companies that were fine but what i'm getting at is that was the conversation in the industry um go to now okay um you've got f gas f gas i'm not sure what f gas means um it means to me a two-week training course which i'll put you on next week if you want ben and you can go and buy this new r32 which is a really low global warming refrigerant okay um, I really want but, to really but, want to buy some of that. You know, <laughs> but what it allows you to do then is it allows you to just open it up to the atmosphere and destroy the atmosphere with lower uh, a lower damaging product. But you could do twice as much if you wanted to. Oh, um, okay. There's no fear of God. No. There's no there's no F gas police having a checkup on us. And I think a lot of people in the industry know this. Um, what are my suggestions? I've got some suggestions. Um, one of them would probably be. Uh, Okay, actually, before I give you my suggestions, let me just say this. Uh, what FGAS have done is a bit like with Arthur and, and also with having lower global warming refrigerants, which, by the way, cost thousands or millions of pounds to develop, mm. which is great, yeah. is a bit like, I'm just t- digging up my notes here, it's a bit like having a fire in your house, yeah, putting out the fire in the front room, and then jumping around and saying, I did it. I put the fire out while the back of the house burns down. Okay. Right. Instead of seeing it as a com- uh, as a collective saying, "Listen, we've got a problem here with people being able to buy things and just dump it out. Mm. We don't know what they're doing." They, I get it. There's a churn, and we need to make uh, the biz- the industry needs to make a bit of money and bring mm. new products into the market. But regulation for me is uh, the way forward. So my suggestions on this: Have you got anything to add? Oh uh, no, nothing so to my, add. No. My suggestions on this is. If somebody was to say, Mr. Swear, you've got all, you're, you're very outspoken, you guys are saying all this stuff, what do you suggest? Well, one thing I would suggest is FGAS splits up completely with regulation of refrigerant. I believe there should be a refrigerant body, which is completely separate to FGAS. FGAS allows you to be an engineer and to be qualified to work with this refrigerant, yeah. but it does not allow you to buy the refrigerant. That should be an additional course. And they sh- these people should be instructed to to make sure that you're not abusing this. I'm going to give you a great example because you might see in the cameras, but we have got an air conditioning wall behind Penn. Um, we have a warehouse full of air conditioning. I'm not going to say how and, much. Uh, I mean full. I, I'm not <laughs> going to the... say how much because we'll probably have somebody with balaclavas turn up. But let me tell you something. We've got over 150 kilos of R32 in this place, okay? Um, there is nothing out there or nobody out there that will come up and say, Jacob, we appreciate you've got a lot of stock. You need better airflow. Mm. Okay, we have ventilation here. We have natural ventilation. But there is nothing out there, that's no one out there that will come up and say, Jacob, you need to get your guys, you need your business to have this, this, and this, and we need to check up on this, this, and this. We're not perfect. As a business, we're not perfect. But we're not the worst. And I'm sure there's storage facilities out there which are even worse. Hmm. R32 is flammable in Europe so in Europe it's a bomb obviously in Japan and the rest of Asia it's not so you know we, we've got a bomb here you know apparently um, that needs sorting out and that would be my suggestion you know split it up split it up um, you know that's my suggestion on the reg- on the regulation side of things but um, that's all I would say needs immediate change okay. in, in the industry. It's just better regulation. It costs us more money, Ben. You yeah. know, to have to deal with more regulation, it yeah. costs us more money, but it makes us a bit more valuable. Yeah. And it sets a standard for the rest of the world. Yeah. Well, now we've covered what you would change. Where do you see the industry 
<sighs> in say ten years' oh, time. Question. Oh, that's a question. Okay. Uh, I did a um, article three years ago in the Parliamentary Review. Okay. Don't recommend doing it. I'm not gonna, but I don't recommend doing it. Um, however, we've got copies here. We can email you some copies. Um, before COVID even happened, I mentioned air purification. Mm. The cleanliness of air was going to be important because of pollution. Yeah. COVID happened, right? Yeah. Uh, I think nearly every single air conditioning unit has air purification built yeah. in or some sort. Okay, we can't monitor this. There's no device that we have that says this air purifier is this working. This is how like, clean it's coming out sort of thing. There is nothing. No. However, that was the first point. Yeah. Um, there was that change. In the next five years... I actually see nothing really changing. I hope I'm wrong. No. I don't see a big change. The only drastic change which is slowly happening yeah. is the, um, the, the the need for control. So okay. we're now on your phone, so we can connect to the Wi-Fi. I know there's manufacturers out there which are developing systems which allow us as businesses control our homeowners from a central computer. Okay. Um, and also to have a business of you know to to remotely access equipment it's been there for some time but it's yeah. gonna be tweaked it's gonna be better the need for control is what i call it the next few years the need for control i'd say the next five to ten years introduces artificial intelligence into the mix with control so what that will do you can imagine ben yeah, you know AI. you set ai yeah. to, to basically tweak the air con to work to the lighting yeah to work to everything to work to your body temperature exactly it that. won't even need to like you to set the temperature for the room, he'll just go, you need to cool down to this extent. Correct. You've had a row with your missus. Yeah. Ben, your, 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 your blood's hot. boiling. Ben, you're hot. You know, <laughs> it's, it's late night. You've got your partner around. You're having some jiggy jiggy. and Candles uh, lit. Candles are lit. Yeah. And, and your Mitsubishi LM with your four louvers, they're going yeah. crazy. You've got air going this way, air going that way. Dodging the candles. It's, like it's, it's all planned. Exactly. That. It'll be coming through the floor, mate. But <laughs> it's, um, that's the only thing that I can see. Um, I'm hoping Mr. Musk... Or Mr. Dyson comes out mm. with. I think there's a there's something there's a. I think the industry's up for grabs, mate. I think yeah. there there probably is a system out there with air uh, using air um, to to cool rooms down. Uh, high powered air with a with Ben. The refrigeration cycle has been around since Victorian times. Yeah, it's old. I think it's the uh, I think uh, early forties. I think it came out. Um, it's an old industry. You know, it's a yeah, bit like yeah. look at cars, yeah. the combustion engine. We're now looking at EV. We're now looking at uh, hydrogen. Yeah. We're now looking at different forms of engine. Yeah. It's changing massively. Yeah, we've got a video on the history, by the way, on YouTube. Which we'll send you. Yeah. You can more than welcome. Ben, ben can sort that out for you. Yeah. But um, that's what I see in the media. Um, in terms of, as an engineer's perspective, and what, if any manufacturers are listening to this, and I hope you are, um, I would say make your products easy to install. Mm. So the e- I, I, I believe, Ben... Um, just to let you know, one of my goals personally and values as business is not discrediting our industry and making me a great big uh, hypocrite. Mm. But I think aircon should be easy to install. Um, our guys are all ve- are fully qualified. They're all very good engineers, but they make it look easy. Yeah. And I think there is a stigma with, you know, especially when you talk about splits and multi splits. As long as you're 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 ticking a few boxes, it doesn't need to be that complicated. So no. if uh, if manufacturers are making products easy to install, I think that'll. Uh, I think that's something that's going to change as well. Yeah. They are going to make the... I know a, a certain brand has... Two of the brands have introduced easier ways of installing units. Um, that's something which maybe the next in the next few years we're going to start to see. See, uh, I mean, I'm quite new to this industry. So um, I've I've just... I've witnessed over the past, what, say, nine months now, mm. um, how popular it is, uh, residential air conditioning in the, the UK. Okay. How po- how popular I see it is now. Yeah. Uh, do you think that's approaching its peak, or do you think it's going to get even more popular? Do you think it, it is kind of like you've, you've, top you've lining? definitely joined us while it's peaking? It's peaking, and peaking. I think there's an element of it's people, just started. People have the... well, it's five years ago. Things have been. We've grown as a business, right? Yeah. So we've had a great year. Um, people have had a bit of money this year because of COVID. Mm. A few people have COVID loans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, blah, blah, blah. Not been a holiday. Um, I think on a scale of one to ten, with residential aircon, I think we're at a seven. Okay. And I think it'll hit an eight, and okay. it'll go back to a four. Okay. So costs are going up. So it's got a little bit more climbing to do. Got a bit more climbing to do. I think. I think this year is the peak of the climb. I think we'll okay. finish as a business with an eight. Um, 
the reason for seven to the eight is I've seen over the past five years how it's grown. Yeah. Um, but I've also seen other businesses come onto the market, you know, Facebook ads, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And it's still very, when it's hot, people want aircon tomorrow. And then it's cool the next day and then they disappear yeah. and then they say, oh, I'm sorry, we've been thinking about it for months. Bloody blah, blah. If you're an aircon engineer or an aircon company or whatever, you know, same with the boiler guys. I'm sure in the winter, everyone wants a new boiler. Then yeah. it warms up and they're like, oh, I actually forget about that. Oh, my boiler's broken down. Can you get me around? Can mm. you fix it tomorrow? So um, I think we're going to peak in the next month. Okay. Um, and I think economy-wise, if the economy drops, which I we can talk about this another time, mm-hmm. I think we're, we're going to have a bit of a problem next year. Um <clears throat> The market will drop, but I think it will go back to the 90s, Ben. And what okay. I mean by the 90s is it's before I was in it, but in the early 90s, it was a luxury item. So yeah. if you were like, you know, you say the whole, the 1%. Yeah. So if you're in a, if you're in a household of 150 to 250K, you know, let's say minimum a year, you would have air con. A bit like, yeah. I don't know, it's like even growing up, like to have an American fridge freeze with a nice machine. Yeah. Well, I've got one of those and I'm not yeah, making I don't. that That's sort a luxury. of money. Well, it's a luxury, but, <laughs> but you can get... Um, you can buy a standard fridge freezer now, can't yeah. you? For so yeah. 150 quid. Yeah. But you can they're buy more your, accessible now. They're yeah. more accessible. Yeah. Um, and that's a great term, accessible, by the way. Um, because aircon the last few years has been more accessible because people have a bit more money and yeah. aircon also is very, very efficient. Um, but I think it's going to be less accessible in the future. Cost can, I can't see aircon products getting reducing. If the no. market drops, I can't see the products dropping in price. I just can't. No. Um because the cost of items are going up because yeah. inflation and the you know the, the money supply being abused, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. So what that would do is it'll drop it. So I'd like it to Ben, you know what? I'm not it's not a problem at peaking and dropping down. Yeah. I hope my four my four out of ten is wrong. I think if we settle at five or six and it stays consistent, I think we're all gonna be okay. Do you do you think that's the that that's the same for commercial? Or do you do you think commercial's peaking or that's got a way to go? Damn. Question. That's a good question. Um if you're a big business, yeah. big corporation, and you've got equipment which is 10 plus years old, it will be replaced. If you're a medium sized business and your equipment is five, six, seven years old and it's slightly inefficient, you're not going to replace your, your, your units no. because of energy then, yeah. because of the cost of energy. So if your energy bills have gone up by double, let's just use an example here you run a three story building and your yeah. electricity costs are three grand a month, and now they're going up to seven grand a month. The cost of installing efficient air conditioning isn't going to bring that bill down significantly. No. You know, um, it's an interesting one. I think in terms of high-rise apartments and schools and government buildings, um, it's going to it's It's it's, going to continue. It's 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 going to continue to grow. It's going to continue to grow. But a lot of the medium businesses and small businesses, you know, God bless you all, and, and I hope these tough times make you stronger and you grow. But people are gonna are gonna struggle, and yeah. an aircon is gonna be one of. Them. Ben, I hope I hope I'm wrong on this, but I genuinely believe. I hope I don't fall into this. If it happens, it happens. I believe we may go to the Costa Coffees or your Neros or your Pretz for aircon. I genuinely mm. do that. You will go to the coffee shop in the summer for the aircon to get yeah to be cool, rather yeah. than going to the one that where the nice friendly guy that you talk to and you have a relationship with in the small business because they don't have it. No, yeah. So, um, so uh, that brings us on to the probably the final point. Not naming any brands. I pro- actually before you give me hammer in the final point, I just oh. want to touch back on requirements. Okay. And also what you just said about um, commercial. Yeah. So legislation has changed. I'll, I'll give an example because obviously some of our clients. Yeah. Um, we can't expose them and we don't want anyone else to know who our clients are. But if you are in a prison cell in the United Kingdom yeah. during the summer, it must not be over 27 degrees. Same oh, as in really? a courtroom. Okay. And in a lot of government buildings, if it gets to 27 degrees, they're going home. Cost the taxpayers money. Cooling is, uh, the heating is the same, minimum of 16 degrees. Not, I'm guessing that's not in a, like a prison cell. Yeah, yeah. If you're that, pr- what, if it hits 20, you're going home? <laughs> ben, well, you're, you're not, being released. You're, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're going home, guys. So, uh, all you criminals out there. <laughs> They're sitting there watching their th- no th- thermometer in, there. in yeah. their room. <laughs> so, they'll be relocated somewhere else. Yeah. So, so, basically, what I'm getting with that is when you say about peaking, where legislation changes, mm. and we've got this precious thing going on where 
we can't be as cold as 16 or as hot as 27. Yeah. That will force aircon and it will force you know, it'll force us, the industry to grow. So that is a, is a plus side of legislation for us as business owners um, and doing air con and manufacturers. I think manufacturers, I'm sure they clock onto this, but legislation changes a lot of buildings, you know, and a lot of governments and a lot of aspects. And yeah. I'm sure those that know about it will act on it if they can. Um, but that's helping the industry. So, if, for example, if you wanted to use the word government, you could have a government discount. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that was the last point. So that has helped. That will help with commercial peak. Yeah. Um, but there will be a drop off in other areas. Okay. All right. Okay. So not naming any names. So no manufacturer names. That usually means that you want to name somebody. I do desperately okay. want to make, okay. na- name name a few particular brands. Okay. Um, what air conditioning brands? A- AC brands. Yeah. Okay. Um, if they are listening right now, what would you say to them? What would be the main thing? Maybe a bit of advice. It doesn't have. Just what would you say to them if you had you know these what? heads of these companies for, looking for, at you? For, uh, if they were here right now, which I hope some of you guys are going to be here, because um, the first point is, do they want to listen to us? And I think they should, because you know uh, yeah. we've got some we've got some really good things to talk about. Um, I want to start it from this: individuals have always joined corporations because of the bigger beast, um, but with with that the corporations are a big sales beast because corporations grow. Corporations need to sustain growth by selling more products. Um, and I think as an individual, um, oh, if I use myself as an example, okay, I'm a very good salesman. I'm a very good salesman because I call myself the sales engineer because I'm an engineer, mm. as you know. Yeah. You know, I still get my hands yeah. dirty from time to time. Um, and I understand people and I listen to people and I understand people's requirements and I don't judge them necessarily, but I'm happy to provide feedback and opinions. Um, but you do have individuals like myself maybe not as crazy and wacky as my extent, join these corporations and get consumed mm. without being outspoken. So what that, I think, can hinder, this is the negative side, pessimistic side, is it hinders innovation from individualism, which I think is really important. Yeah. Um, plus side, obviously, is if you have people outspoken enough to join these corporations, they will make a difference. And as you see with some of these brands, some of the top two, three brands, they progress and they become, you know, yeah. through the ranks. So... Um, that's one thing. So individuals joining these uh, corporations, these big uh, air conditioning brands, stay individual, stay real. One of he, he's not a mentor directly, but he did teach me when I did my foundation degree. Uh, Jeff, um, he said something to me, and I never forget it. It's one of my mantras that I subconsciously tell myself most days: keep it real. Uh, mm-hmm. People don't tend to keep it real when they're with other people and they are swallowed by this piece. Keep it real and stay individual. There's a reason why you're on this planet. Stay an individual. Yeah. Um, talking to them and looking at the future brands. So we've got, the, you know, the top two brands. Let's yeah. call them Team Blue and Team Team Red, which we'll actually say. <laughs> We're not going to get sued. That says, that says a lot, but so, yeah. You know, you've got a kid, you know, uh, you know, if you're a tele, if you're into Teletubbies, yeah. you know, you, yeah. you're either a red or a blue anyway, yeah. you know. I'm sure there's some reason behind the colours. Um, or Power Rangers. Yeah, I, was there a, I don't know if there was a Blue Ranger. Oh, no, there was a Blue there Ranger. There was. Yeah, Ranger, I was. I was always. Ranger. It's really interesting. But I was always red and green. Yeah. I always liked the Red Ranger. I like the Red. Yeah, because he's a, he was a leader of the, it, the Power correct, Rangers. He, correct, yeah. he was. Whereas the Blue wasn't. But yeah. that's got nothing to do with the brands, obviously. <laughs> but the top two brands: Mitsubishi Electric, Daikin, Market Leaders, has been Market Leaders for years. Okay, what to the? F- in my opinion, matter of opinion, don't shoot me. I'm not trying to fall out of anyone. I because I want to actually. I know you I, I understand both models. They're yeah. both they're, they're both changes, businesses. Yeah. Some good, some bad. But I think they need to target the small businesses. I, there is a big churn at the moment. Mechanical businesses yeah. going out of business. Uh, I think you've probably overheard a few conversations, but there are some big mechanical firms going out of business. Yeah. And what that means, Ben, is they're losing the relationships, and mm. it's going back to the small business. So, if I was to start the company tomorrow, I would be attracted to the brand which would offer the support yeah. if you were to sell me a lower branded product tomorrow and i just started the business today and you had said jacob our product is not as good as the top two i'm on the phone i'm here um, yeah i'm gonna any issues con- constant we'll sort out. you've got good warranty we've got constant contact yeah you know what um we've had this with some of the other brands um i'm not going to mention them because then you know i'm just not going to um they they've supported us since day one yeah and okay their product price has gone up but yeah there's room for them um the other way of looking at this is if you are 
if you are one of the if you are a head in Mitsu or Daikin and you sit down and you say, okay, some of the smaller distributors that sell other products mm. are they doing more than we are? I think they would. Uh, the, I I know they are. Some of the smaller yeah. distributors that are selling your products to better. It's interesting because back in the nineties, Ben Mitsubishi Electric didn't sell direct. They mm. you'd only be able to buy Mitsu from a distributor. Yeah. And I get that set up because then what you do is you have people, you have businesses selling for you. Yeah. And you deal with the infrastructure of technical. Yeah. Uh, you know, after sales, design, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But to change to that model, it takes time. Yeah. Um. I will buy from a manufacturer tomorrow, which has a. Uh, an efficient product again the efficiencies are almost all the same you know they're not there's no big difference the look is the difference in houses but there's not huge difference ben in a lot of the products um and we've touched on this and that's account managers yeah account managers are everything so if you are this if you are working for the top two and your account manager your account manager means everything yeah. if you're one if you're working with some of the smaller businesses um brands and your account manager is very good you need to look after him and yeah. i think I think to be a small brand at the moment, I think you should go after some of the bigger fishes. I think I would. Yeah. Um, as a business, we, as we grow, Ben, we want some really, really good sales engineers on our team. Um, if they come from manufacturers or they come from other firms, because um, we'll look after you. And yeah. the big manufacturers have predominantly always looked after their staff yeah. while crushing individualism. Um, but what... I think one and two can change. I think in the future it could change. I think one and two could change to two and three yeah. uh, over the next 10 years. Just because if the industry drops, although the market share is there, I think it gives opportunities for some of the smaller brands to say, listen, we're going to have a really good punt at this. Um, there are two brands in particular, um, Samsung and Panasonic, which they're giving it a go. Yeah. Their products have never been as good. Um, some are av advocates, but they're after support and their availability and what's happening at 10 o'clock at night and get responses. Not putting down uh, Mitzi and Daikin in any way, mm -hmm. but some of these smaller ones are, are, are reacting to this. And yeah. These are the people which are pushing the brands into the future. And as you know, once you get used to something, um, you will push it. Yeah. You know, All our boxes are a few brands out there, all our hundreds of air conditioning units that we have in stock. If we had the support of some of the smaller brands, we'd swap, we, and we were, we were suffering with the bigger two, I'd switch it overnight. I yeah. I really mean it. Yeah, as long as it means that we can maintain our values. Great customer service, great part turnaround. Yeah. If there's a breakdown, we can sort it out. We've got support. We 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 could change that so at the moment. Yeah, so it's really important for that account manager so that you think that is like the the face of the company. It is the face of the company. The account to you. manager is the face. If I call if my if if one of my customers ring us and we don't get back to them, yeah, we lose. We failed. If you're an account manager for a big business and you're not calling back your engineers or your contractors, mm. you've failed. It doesn't matter how good your product is because, you know, I'm, I'm seeing you as the face of the business and I think that's the same with a lot. Uh, yeah. We did a poll recently on LinkedIn. Yeah. Ben, yeah. Ben's going to sort that out, comment, put it in the link below. We got a lot of friction and traction yeah. from businesses. It's quite interesting. People. Like, for me, I learned a lot from that. So it might be worth you guys jumping jumping on Just LinkedIn have a, have and have a, a look. Just have a, have, a, have a look at it. Um, it's really interesting. I'm really impartial on there because we deal with both Mitsubishi Electric and Daikin. Um, if you want to ask me what my opinion is, I will give you my opinion. I'm not going to give it to you right now. No. But I think if you read the post as an outsider, which Ben has done, yeah. Um, Ben is not an engineer. No, I am a digital marketer. He knows nothing about engineering. Nothing. However, from looking at that post, as a business analysis, working for the top two, you will learn from reading the 50-odd comments where things are lacking. But then listen here. If you're, if you're your, your threes, your fours, your fives, your six in the market share here, learn from it. Look at it and say, damn, these people aren't... They're not getting the support they need. Or Look at the comments and see what you think. But... If I was if I was brand manufacturer number three or four, Ben, I would look at them comments and go, "We well, got an opportunity here." Yeah, it's only a snippet, but again, you know, I said earlier about the churn. Yeah. In five six years time, Ben, I'm here for another twenty years, man. I ain't going nowhere. So you know, you need to make friends with us. But there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot of people out there in their forties and fifties like me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Please like us. Um, in the next twenty years, or the mm. next, let's go the next five to ten years a lot of the businesses are going to move on and a lot yeah. of the bigger air conditioning contractors are going to get smaller. It's just a natural churn of life. And and with that, um, poises new new people. And mm. it's a great opportunity for some of the smaller uh, companies to uh, 
to, to get to get involved and help grow. So yeah, that that's what I would uh, I'd probably say for the for the bigs at the moment. So hopefully in the, an episode in the future we can get a good account, account manager on. I'd like to get the most outspoken account uh, outspoken account manager, and I'd like to get some tech, techies in from the bigs. Yeah. And um, I'd like to get you in a room, and uh, you won't probably want to sit in the same room as each other because I know the hatred is pure. Mm. Um, but it'd be really good to know what uh, what changes the businesses are doing to yeah. uh, to accommodate with uh, the change in the industry. Yeah, see the insides. Right, that concludes our first episode. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, so, yeah, go. What I'd like to know some comments. If if you've watched this, I'd like to know a few comments. Um, yeah. We've mentioned a few opinions. You've questioned me. Um, this is the start. So we are, we're going to continue to 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 press our industry. And we want you engineers, contractors, businesses to get behind us because we want to involve you. And we want you to ask the questions that are answered by the bigs. Um, you'll get the answers. We'll make sure you get the answers. And then on the side of that, we're going to get, you know, we've got a few people lined up in here yep. which have run businesses, which have advice. Man, we're going to hit the schools. So, you know, if you're a 15, 16-year-old and you're lacking a bit of drive or uh, direction, we're going to get some people which which are going to share their stories with you. And uh, Yeah, definitely. And get some get of our guys. There. So uh, have a wonderful week. Yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, hit the bell notification, all of that jazz. Like as well. Have a great week.